we flat earthers had to address science in order to understand flat earth concepts. You can't understand flat earth concepts. You can't get, grasp the ideas of flat earth without um, the knowledge of the globe. I have a master's degree. I learned the same things you did. Maybe you even learned more. Maybe no. I learned more. It doesn't what, really what's, matter. What's your degree on? My master's is not a scientific degree. I have a master's in human relations. I have oh, a okay. bachelor's in sociology, criminology. But I'm also an RH negative who's been sabotaged by my government. And whether you change the word to mentally disabled or mentally slow, at the end of the day, it doesn't change the fact that the person's fucking retarded. And when we're dealing with flat earthers, we're dealing with retards. We are also dealing with delusional people. And generally, more often than not, you're going to be dealing with liars, dishonest people. You're going to be dealing with people that use logical fallacies all the time. And you're also going to be de dealing with people that are delusional. Every one of you are all smug. You guys have huge mouths. You're so arrogant. You think you know everything and you know nothing. You're constantly insulting everybody, telling them that they're all brainwashed and how they fucking only repeat what they've been told in school and they're fucking stupid and they don't know the truth and just do research and you never give any evidence at all to support your position. You people are pathetic. You're losers. You're the dumbest fucks that's ever walked on the planet. How you doing, man? Did the twins win? Hey, right on. Uh, have you ever crossed your mind that satellites don't exist? No, I got direct TV. Hey, well, that doesn't mean that satellites do exist, man. Well, that moon actually starts down at the bottom of the screen, but that's fine. We can watch it from there. So see how the moon's standing still? Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as the satellite's deployed, okay, satellite's deployed. Now the moon can begin, and the moon will start its little trek again. Here it goes. Okay, now the moon will stop for the next satellite to be deployed. And this is the kind of bullshit that you guys will just accept. You'll come up with some bullshit answer for it that why the moon just stops for fucking SpaceX satellites to be deployed. You mean you mean it can't possibly be in any way, shape, or form that it's actually the Falcon 9 rocket that's doing the turning? Oh, my God! <laughs> what do you mean the turning? The moon is staying still, you ignorant piece of shit. It's actually the rocket that's doing the moving. If the camera is attached to the satellite that's actually doing the moving, then the picture's going to move with it. If you don't have a fucking reference point from it, then of course it's going to confuse you. No. For fuck's sake, this is so easy, a fucking kindergartner could get it. Why is it that a grown adult can't understand these simple fucking concepts? The satellites are smaller than a plane, and they're much higher up. And they're not actually emitting their own light because they're just old metal tubes, jet boxes. But somehow we see them as stars, shining points of light in our sky. At night, when the sun is behind the planet, so there's no light actually hitting it to bounce back down to us. And also the moon is behind them because it's farther further away so there's nothing really just the plan no maybe our street lights our street lights are shining up into the atmosphere and then so far up the, the, the street lights are hitting the satellites and the light bounces back so this video is an astronaut explaining the mission it's not like practice footage or anything watch closely our uh, Dan sat in the pilot seat during this operation, uh, sort of monitoring the uh, motion of the vehicle, making sure that it was steady and that the uh, 
but with the, you know, there were very few uh, vibrations of any sort. This is a picture of the INSAT uh, actually being deployed from the uh, spacecraft. You can see that the, the deploy went very smoothly at the moment of deployment. Did you see it in the background? There was a guy in the background, man. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. You can't deny that that's someone in the background. There's a guy moving in the background. Here, watch it again. Watch it closely. I, I looked up or I tried to look up the size of this rocket. I, I found this picture. You can see it's massive. So if that rocket is in space and if there's a guy in the background in that footage, that means that there are like giants but like insane big giants floating around in space looking at nasa that's pretty that's probably why they don't dare to go back to the moon and why they hide so much stuff space is full of giants so they're going up into space but they're they're flying with us at 1600 kilometers per hour and then they reach the barrier between our atmosphere and open space but instead of being completely torn apart by the sheer um, uh, violence of the momentum change from the 1600 kilometers per hour to oh now you're in open space they just silently and gently glide off into a low earth orbit into the vacuum of space into just nothing kind of like when you're on a merry-go-round spinning really fast and you drop a gumdrop candy ball gumball gumdrop drop as you're spinning super fast on your merry-go-round that's kind of like what happens with the satellites going into space, low earth orbit. But the satellite doesn't just go flying, it just gently uh, and then does all the things that it does. The case that they were handed those jerseys after the two Super Bowl teams were picked, in which case they are taping on earth. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, yeah, there's the, they, they're probably just in front of a green screen, but yeah, I think that's an excellent find because first of all, we know how often they fail to send rockets up there. I mean, what is it? Half the time they blow up before they even reach halfway to, you know, through the troposphere. And so even if they, uh, you know, sent out all the jerseys then, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But no, uh, I, I think that this is really good evidence that they're just faking stuff from the Earth. Uh, they wouldn't have sent, I mean, first of all, if they would have actually sent all of those jerseys up in December, um, and yeah, I remember learning early on that it costs like two to $5,000 per pound to send anything into space, which I always thought was sort of silly, especially when you see like all this junk that they have all around them. Like it's supposed to make them, you know, make it look very scientific, but uh, I mean, if you look at each individual piece of uh, stuff that's even in this one scene, it's like, okay, what is all this stuff? And by the way, you can clearly see they never close their hatches in the background. They've got an open hatch, which would be like sort of a court marshalable or whatever uh, section right. eight, section eight offense if you were in the Navy. But anyway, uh, so watch one part right here, just if you watch her shirt and you'll see she moves right there, that there is a glitch. And if that was a camera glitch, then all of this behind them would need to glitch out that it can't just be the person watch glitch that's what would happen if it was some sort of green screening or some sort of uh, trick photography and that's why you see the glitch i'll show one more time here that you see the glitch only in the one person right there and not and then later in this video you see him glitch out and her not um it's just you know to me it's quite obvious and again if uh the case was that they had all these jerseys up there then they should show all the jerseys and simply say to people hey We've got safety on the inside and danger like the blackness of space on the outside definitely hazardous to uh, human uh, life you would not build the space station the way they did you would build everything inside so that you could remain safe you could go throughout the plane and install things from the inside of the plane if something went wrong you would be fixing it from the inside. But that's not quite how they do it on the ISS. They want to build everything on the outside. So they'll put their apparatuses sticking out every different direction. It looks like a disaster. It's kind of a travesty to science that they call that thing scientific. But they put everything on the outside 
And not just that, but they run wires and connectors and satellites and all kinds of fun stuff running on the outside. So they've got wires and cords in every different direction. So, of course, you need to go outside and basically put your life on the line. Anytime there's a minor little nick or something comes unplugged, now you've got to get on that big space suit and you got to go out and fix it. Not only that, but you have to stay tethered to the flying spaceship. So then you've got your little fat astronaut man right here, and he's got to be tethered. And if you got usually two of them out there in case one of them floats away or something, you got another one and he's also tethered. That just makes no sense. It just is not the way anybody would run the operation, except if you're NASA, then you're just a bunch of clowns. And uh, this makes no sense. Hey, while you got your cell phone on, uh, can I just encourage you to Google image satellites in space? And if you find a real picture of a satellite in outer space, I'll buy you dinner. Bye. Are you serious? Yeah, because there are no I, real pictures of outer space, I'm of satellites. A you are? Yes. Okay, but, but that doesn't prove that satellites that can use your, for communication purposes are real. How do you think you're using your phone? Ground towers and fiber optics. Yeah, I do have a YouTube channel if you want to check it out. And Hugh, no, well, I know you, that might be your opinion. Why don't, why don't you actually do some science and figure shit out? I wish that you would and figure out that the Earth is flat I'm and not a ball. PhD. You're a dumbass. But that doesn't prove that anything. It proves if you think the world is flat, fucking get a life. The Earth has never been proven to be spinning, though. Oh my God. If we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, how am I able to do that? It doesn't make any sense. Uh oh, retard alert! Retard alert, class! Now notice to go to north, all you're doing is turning it on a flat XY axis. Now if we were living on a globe, north would be the top of a globe, so there would have to be a horizontal axis too. But the fact that to go to north, all you have to do is turn the compass horizontally across a XY axis proves that the Earth is flat. But this is just verifiable evidence. You cannot deny it. Anybody can stick that level on that globe with the tilt included, spin it, and see none of these levels, all of these levels would do the exact same thing. If I just set this here, and I get that to where it's level, and just leave it here all day, at some point that should move because I'm on a spinning ball. What I'm going to show is that this bowl is representative, if we hold the earth about here, of about this latitude, which is about, I don't know, 30 degrees, okay? But this represents the oceans over this area, see? All under there, all that water under there is represented by this water. So as you can see, we have north, east, and south. And I hope you guys realize that if you were to continue in the same direction for a thousand miles, you'd still be going north, east, and south. So now we gotta find west. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna turn this black circle towards west. And now turn it until the needle is in the red like this, guys. And as you can see, now it's there, so this is where west is. So we're gonna take this blue thing to keep the distance consistent, put a coin there, and now we have west. It doesn't matter how big that ball is. Once they do a rotation, that's no different than going through a day here. So put your damn level on a table, make sure it's level, and put a camera on it for one hour, two hours, as long as it takes for it to fucking sink into your head, reality. 
Let's see if the water will move its way towards the equator. Good Lord, look at that. Look at how much higher it's gone. Now, how much higher it's gone compared to where it was earlier, this denotes movement of water on a spinning body. And this is water held by a rigid surface. The gas is not a rigid surface. Water tension on the boundary between water and air is also not rigid. So, this doesn't happen in the real world, does it? But the real world does have water, doesn't it? But this doesn't happen in the real world, does it? North, zero degrees. Northeast, 45 degrees. North, 90 degrees. Uh, southeast, um, 135 degrees. South, 180 degrees. Southwest, 225 degrees. West, 270 degrees. And Northwest, 315 degrees. And then back to North, which is zero slash 360. So as you can see, the general shape we're starting to make is a circle. Now what I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind. What do you think would happen if we did the same experiment with a colored pencil that was about 2,000 miles long? You get a pretty big circle. What I'm trying to tell you guys is that we are literally living in a circle of ice, which is Antarctica. And this simple experiment proves it. This proves we are not on a spinning ball. If you don't believe me, put it on a globe, get a smaller one, attach it to a globe, spin it around, and watch how it does not stay level. Then how does a level stay level on a construction site and a building is built perfectly square with plumb bobs and these that should be moving constantly as this imaginary ball we're supposedly on is moving. There is no getting around that. Any way I move this in the most slight direction that bubble moves. There's no way around that. Whether I'm moving it or the object I'm sitting on is moving it. If I was standing on a box right now and someone started to tilt the box over, it would go, the bubble moves. It doesn't matter what I'm standing on, what this is on, whatever it's on, if I'm attached to that box and it starts moving, it's gonna move. So if I'm on a big ass imaginary fucking ball that's spinning, this would move throughout the day. An ad hoc explanation is used to support a weak argument. A strong argument does not require a ad hoc explanation. In fact, a strong argument would be weakened by introducing an ad hoc explanation. However, a weak argument will be found to be false very quickly unless it's padded with ad hoc explanations, like gravity. Gravity is an ad hoc explanation for the argument that we are on a spinning globe. What is this argument that we're on a spinning globe? Well, the argument goes like this. It looks like the sun goes round us and it looks like the stars go round us, but that can't possibly be right. That's a fallacy. So we must be going round. And if we are going round, and things like this say we're not, then there must be some way that we could be going round and this not happen. Hence, gravity. Gravity is just there to bolster a demonstrably false belief. And that makes a very weak argument. Shout out to Dan Pratt. You are, you are my spirit animal. You are my, I can't.
can't, I can't say this with too much sincerity because I am a married woman, but you, I love you, and you are, you are killing it. You are, man, I, I, t I told you, I think you think I'm kidding, but seriously, I uh, put on your videos, speed it up a little bit, and I, I do squats and, and lift weights to that because it pumps me the fuck up. Like it, ugh, on with the video. This, Dan Pratt, your video about levels today made me clap, it made me laugh, and it made me almost cry in parts. I've been thinking about this for probably, I don't know, maybe like, maybe like two or three months. And it started because I was watching a, a cleaning show, and um, on my computer that is, I don't have a television, and one of the guys is obsessed, his OCD, it, it focuses on whether things are level, and he goes around his house and he sits this level on all these different areas in his house to make sure that it's perfect. And as I was watching that episode, just like literally two months ago, maybe three, I thought to myself, holy shit, the level, the bubble in it. That proves flat earth, irrefutable, it's not debatable, it's this right here. I, oh man, I've been wanting to do a video on this, high time and this is it man this fucking level proves flat earth if i'm gonna quote dan pratt and this is like the best thing i've heard since like shakespeare